Hello there, welcome back to Philosophy Insights. Today we will talk about a recent development, which is the tech sector that can be seen as a driver for social change. Economics professor Peter Klein recently gave a talk at the Mises Institute about the phenomenon that is connected to the woke movement and about the motivation behind or from the big corporations to implement wokeness in their daily business. Firstly, I want to explain what the term wokeness means and how it can be differentiated from the social justice movements. So here is Klein. The term woke uh, has been around for a number, of, uh, a number of years, but recently has come to be used sometimes by its proponents, but mainly by critics as a sort of ironic uh, reference to a kind of emphasis on social justice that is a little bit different from uh, si similar movements that you know ha have been around since at least the civil rights era in the US and in Europe. So I'm going to define wokeness or woke as sort of a strong concern with so-called social justice issues with particular reference to things like race, gender, sexual orientation, sexual identity, a concern with what in the corporate and university sector is now usually called DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, with a particular philosophical foundation, right? So wokeness differs from uh, pr previous social justice movements in that it's really built on a particular set of philosophical claims, mostly those associated with the Frankfurt School uh, and, and its more recent descendants. So what do I mean? Uh, in, in sort of epistemology or the theory of, of knowing, how do we know what we know? Uh, what are the appropriate sources of knowledge? How do we validate truth claims and so forth? Uh, the woke movement, right, prioritize sort of subjective personal experience over, you know, sort of logical argument, uh, uh, refer uh, appeal to data and so forth. It would be, you know, a woke person would say upon reading Karl Menger's principles and, uh, d and learning about Menger's uh, unique treatment of uh, his, his understanding of utility and Menger's claim that uh, uh, marginal units of a good are allocated to lower valued uses than previous units and therefore we can speak about diminishing marginal utility, a woke person would say, Carl, speak your truth, okay, right? But you know, Marxists might have another truth and uh, you know, Keynesians might have a different truth and mathematical economists might have a different truth and all, they're all equally valid. Now, one important step is to go from general wokeness to wokeness on the corporation level. And one could find it very puzzling here because they would ask themselves the question, why corporations in the first place would even care so much to implement wokeness in their business, in their corporation, and for example, invest a lot in diversity trainings. So uh, I'm particularly interested in today's talk about how wokeness affects businesses, companies, right? Can we, is it, does it make sense to talk about companies or corporations being woke? Uh, this term was, this phrase was introduced by the New York Times columnist, uh, columnist uh, Ross uh, Douthat in an article in 2018 called The Rise of Woke Capital. I think that's the first time the term woke terms woke capital, woke capitalism, woke corporations entered the lexicon. And he was describing the phenomenon that on the, on the face of it might seem kind of puzzling and surprising that a lot of, you know, for-profit capitalist companies, large, successful, profitable companies seem to be embracing woke ideology right, inside the company, outside the company, and so forth. So the amount of investment uh, in companies on DEI training has skyrocketed in recent decades. Uh, Chris Rufo did a little count uh, and, and showed that, you know, all 100 of the Fortune 100, the 100 largest corporations in the world, all have large and substantial DEI training programs, DEI hiring criteria, you know, DEI staffs with hundreds of employees and so forth, all designed to make sure that the company internally is following appropriate practices to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. And you remember, equity is different from equality in the sense that equity refers to outcomes, right? So uh, a, a company is lagging in DEI indicators if, if people with the appropriate, appropriately defined identities 
are not on average achieving the same results. Well, it is interestingly enough um, a phenomenon that is very common in corporate structures, but it is most of the time driven by true, let's say, the middle management and top managers and CEOs actually don't have a clue about what's going on in their corporation most of the time when it comes to wokeness. And for example, they don't even know what's going on in their DEI or diversity trainings. And in general, they just give the middle management the resources to keep up an image that they think is a good public figure. It's not the president of the university who's pushing it. It's not the board of directors or curators or whatever. It's some kind of mid-level university bureaucrat. And of course, the ranks of mid-level university bureaucrats have greatly swollen in the last, uh, last many decades, which partly explains the increasing costs of college tuition. Okay, um, a, a little bit of broader context. Uh, you know, if you look at some earlier movements, like the drive for companies to embrace corp so-called corporate social responsibility, or to, to embrace an all-stakeholder model of governance in which it's not just shareholders whose opinions matter, but the opinions of various stakeholders, workers, and customers, and suppliers, and so forth, you know, that movement has also been analyzed similarly to the way I'm describing woke capitalism and the woke corporation. Namely, that some of that is done for purely instrumental reasons. If we say that we care about the environment and we care about all our, you know, our workers, not just try, you know, and, and we're not just greedy profiteers, then we'll actually make more profit than we otherwise would. Um, you know, it's different from wokeism in my interpretation in that, you know, CSR and stakeholder models, they're, they don't have any particular philosophical grounding. They're not, they're not committed to critical theory or the Frankfurt School philosophy. And really, they're more, uh, they're more about making marginal changes, right? We, we want to put uh, representatives of organized labor on the board of directors so that we show that we have a commitment to a broader set of stakeholders. They don't want to tear capitalism down to its foundations and rebuild it you know, in a different kind of model, as many woke advocates uh, surely do. Um, I think it was uh, uh, Ibram Kendi who said, how did he, uh, sorry, I don't have the quote in front of me. It was something like, you know, to be anti-racist is to be anti-capitalist. You know, we can't solve racism unless we unless we destroy capitalism and replace it with socialism. Uh, you also get that from uh, uh, Robin DiAngelo and other sort of leading spokesper spokespersons for woke. Now, you might ask, why does woke seem to be concentrated in certain industries, like entertainment, retail sales, technology, and so forth? You know, Nike's Colin Kaepernick ad, which you might remember from a few years ago, was one of the first examples of an explicitly, you know, sort of woke PR campaign. Uh, Gillette also did had this infamous ad at the Super Bowl a couple years ago, uh, uh, de uh, denouncing toxic masculinity. Gillette is a, is a sell of razors, but it was about how you know men who buy razors should not act like you know tough guys or whatever because that's toxic masculinity. Gillette got slammed. Uh, both in the press and also their, their razor sales went way down. Um, I just read last week of something at Disney where, so apparently, I, I've forgotten this, but there's a section, there, section of Disney World with some, uh, like a shopping area where it's like the fairy godmother's area, I can't remember, it's the fairy godmother's land or whatever, and they used to have, all, all the employees would be female and they were called future fairy godmothers. The store employees. Now they've changed it to fairy godmothers, helpers, and and any gender people of any gender can be you know can work in in these shops. And the claim was, well, this is more uh, you know this is more woke than having a gender specific designation for a particular type of employee. And people have been sort of picking on that as well. Okay, so what about big tech? Right? Why is big tech in particular? you know, uh, playing such a strong role in the woke movement. Well, again, there are two ways to look at this, right? You might say, well, let's just look at the, let's just look at the tech sector as another industry, as another type of firm, like lots of other firms, you know, that is responding to the change in our culture, right? Our, our culture is becoming more woke. Woke ideas are becoming mainstream in education and, and you know, um, and so forth. 
communication and you know big tech just like other industries is also having to deal with this um, yeah I mean it's certainly true that uh, tech companies are, are like any companies in that they do have to respond to external pressure cultural change social change and so forth um, you know tech tech companies tend to employ how should I say uh, employees of tech companies are probably more woke on average than employees of oil and gas companies, right? Or employees of you know other kinds of companies. There was an infamous incident uh, at uh, at Google uh, where uh, right after the 2016 election, when Donald Trump was elected president, Google called an all hands meeting, and here's the top Google team up on the stage, you know, helping employees to work through their grief and you know giving them how to set up safe spaces because of what, this obviously traumatic event that the wrong person got elected president and the top executives were literally shedding tears on stage. I mean, it, it became sort of a joke. But you can say, well, look, if, if, if that's the way your workers are, if, if, you're, if the majority of your workforce really is traumatized by the result of this election, well, it makes sense that the company would want to do something for those employees, you know, so they can continue to write code and be productive and do other stuff. Um, as an aside, um, most tech companies are actually not very diverse at all in their workforces. Um, I just read something about Amazon. The, the only sector, the, the only um, type of, the only uh, employee classification at Amazon that is at all diverse is like, you know, people who, who do physical labor at an Amazon uh, fulfillment center, right? But the, the engineers, the executives are all, almost all white or Asian, okay? Um, so it doesn't seem to be much of an effort uh, to diversify the workforce, uh, you know, in, in a more meaningful way. And, and again, you have this phenomenon I mentioned before of allowing these sort of mid-level HR people to run the woke programs. That happens at tech firms just like it happens at any firms. It is um, important to remember this point when explaining wokeness on the level of big corporations. I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more videos. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit the notification bell.